When I was a kid growing up on the farm, I tried lifting up this passage to my dad, hoping to get out of some bean whacking or bean riding. It didn't work. Why did we have to bean whack? Well, for those of you who are too young to remember, we didn't have Roundup ready beans back then. The weed seeds would dirty or contaminate the sample the elevator would take as you brought in the harvest and make it worth less. So the cleaner the beans, the more money you get. Jesus mentions specifically wheat and tares in the parable. Identifying the wheat from the tares is a bit tricky. When they are young, they look nearly identical, and when they are mature, it's much more clear. It's good news that God doesn't have any trouble identifying what or whose we are. The other bit of good news is this. It's not our job to weed. Praise God. But it means we may end up with a lot of plants around us that don't look anything like us. And we might be tempted to think that they are a weed. The thing is, we are all created by God. So what then is sown by the evil one? Some commentaries say that the real issue in the garden, eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, was that Adam and Eve and every person since has desired to label everything good or evil, to judge things, to exclude some things and affirm others. Perhaps God's intention was that we not have that desire at all. Because the minute we proclaim something evil, we have made ourselves evil to something else in creation. And so the cycle of violence began. So how can we stop the cycle? Can we? Walter Wink in his book, Engaging the Powers, says this. That first week after the September 11th bombing, as everyone was talking about the comparable shock of Pearl Harbor... I couldn't stop thinking of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. A terrible evil had befallen us in the attack on Pearl Harbor, yet how much did we get pulled into that evil to unleash the nuclear nightmare of Hiroshima and Nagasaki? The Japanese began the war with an attack that killed 2,500 people, mostly military men, and we ended the war with two attacks that killed 250,000 people, mostly civilians, women, children, and the elderly. As we contemplated our response to September 11th, those first several weeks, I wondered how we could respond to this evil without creating new evils or being made evil ourselves. All our attempts to get rid of evil will end up like the farmer says. All they will accomplish by their frantic pulling up of weeds is the tearing up of the wheat right along with them. On September 11, 2011, terrorists killed almost 3,000 people and wounded 6,000. In the war on terrorism since, 88,000 terrorists have been killed, including 10,000 Americans, both military and civilian, and 56,000 injured. I think the difficulty in many of those commentaries is that they are forgetting that we are the seeds, the good seeds sown by God that grow into wheat. We're not the ones who are supposed to weed the field. That's the duty of God's angels. And last I checked, none of you have wings. Or halos, and me neither, frankly. And realizing the tough job that they have to do, I am glad I am no angel. Leave it to God and his angels to do the sorting, but we have a job or two to do. If we're the seeds, our job is just to grow. Be fruitful. Let our roots go down deep. Soak up the water and sunshine like you do on the beach when you dig your feet into the sand. Feel the goodness come into you all over. Life is good. You'll just have to grow along some plants that are different from you. And Matthew says, let both of them grow together. In Greek, it's translated ephete, meaning to permit. So while our first job is to grow, our second job is to let others grow grow and let others grow. If you think about it, that's, that's pretty profound. Pretty life-giving. Forgiving, even, which is another way of interpreting that word. Ephesus also means to suffer or to forgive. And so a more careful translation might be to permit or suffer or forgive them to grow together. God is our example here. The enemy has sown weeds into his field, but God doesn't seek vengeance. He lets it grow together. And when all things have reached their fullness and it is clear what is wheat and what is weed, well, then he and his angels will deal with the weeds. 
which is really great because I'll be honest, there are times I act like a weed. There are things I've said and done, fruit that I've produced that didn't match up to my holy DNA that God gave to his children. So I'm glad God's patient with me. I'll try to do the same for you. God's suffering, God's dying and resurrection and God's forgiving has shown us that he can indeed make all things new and will and has. Life is in God's good and gracious hands. Forgiveness is learned. The tendency to forgive increases with each succeeding decade of life. Children learn it by watching their parents and neighbors forgive and being mentored by them and how to forgive and looking to the example of Jesus. How he acted in the face of injustice or cruelty and what he had to say about them. It's not easy. Offensive behavior isn't a one-shot deal. Sometimes we discover several hurtful actions of a person over time. Each revelation requiring a new start on the process. It's not a new reason to justify labeling. But we must, in fact, keep holding out for change, even in the most hopeless of those around us. And with those who prove to be abusers, we must draw clear boundaries to protect ourselves and those we love. What we must remember is that we are all children of God. We have all been sown into the world by God, but around us lay the remains of our judging of others. Pain, hurt, neglect, exclusion, death, and destruction. The trick is to remember that each of us is God's holy and precious seed, not weed. God's child, holy and dearly loved, no matter what voices around us, real or imagined, tell us otherwise about one another. We must hold on to that truth, that we call one another wheat and not weed, and call upon the power of God's love and forgiveness to break the cycle of violence, to do the work of forgiveness to the pain and the hurt that surrounds us for life, to grow and to let grow. Amen.